Hello everyone and welcome back. Heart of it most likely at one point was the go-to exotic that every titan would use and wear for 90% of the content in game. As of now, the exotic has slowly faded away into the community conscience until now. This endgame build allows you to not only solo a number of tougher enemies on your own with the amount of firepower you're packing, but most importantly, we have gotten the ability region ready to feel more like its pre nerf form. It's not going to be the OG version you see everyone do, but this variant covers all the small things you may want an endgame build to have. So if you need a go-to build that you can always rely on, then the following should sort you out. So, starting with Aspect, you're going to want to have Touch of Thunder, which allows our pulse grenades to create ion traces periodically and also get stronger the longer it is out. Then you want Knockout, where critically wounding a target will increase your melee damage and start regaining your health. The following allows us a basic level of creating fantastic build that offers more ability energy, damage and health regen through small means. All of these will be helpful in whatever content you play in. For the fragment Spark of Ions, where defeating your targets create ion traces. Spark of Recharge, where while critically wounded, your melee and grenade energy recharges faster. Spark of Magnitude, where lingering grenade durations are increased. And Spark of Shock, where your ion grenades jolt targets. To maximize our ability's effect, it will be important to make sure we get as much ion traces as possible in game. Using pulse grenades, Spark of Ion and Shock are two fragments that increase the likelihood of getting more ion traces while we play. Combining this with Spark of Recharge as well allows us to get even more ability energy back when critical, which for the build is going to be a big must. This is as far and as simple the build needs to get when selecting the key parts needed. For the mods and stats, both Resilience and Discipline will be the two stats to invest in while using Heart of Inmost Light. Resilience at tier 10 will be giving you a 30% damage reduction and a 21 second cooldown when using thrusters. The 30 second cooldown when using our thrusters will be an important key here for allowing us to quickly refill our abilities once one has been actively used. It will also trigger both powerful attraction and reaper mods for easily sustaining a high armor charge flow as we play. You can reduce the stat down to a tier 8 or 9, but with endgame mobs capable of one-shotting you, Having a high resilience and mobility stat will be important for the survival of the build. Our discipline is at tier 9 and at this level we'll be getting a 1 minute 9 second cooldown using our pulse grenades. Although a high cooldown rate still, we do have ion traces, sparkle recharge and bomber in play which will help to alleviate the problem. You also have to remember that with heart active, you don't need to reach a maxed out level unless you like to maximize your gains. The following when action does fairly well with regenerating our abilities and I feel like this area can stay how it is. Now I won't cover strength too much as it's not a stat we'll be using too often but having this at tier 5 with seismic strike will be helpful for quickly blowing targets if we get into a bad situation. Now in this section here we'll be covering armor charges and additional mods. Charged up will allow us to hold on to more armor charges as we play and collect while stacks and stacks will make sure our armor charges collected will be 2 instead of 1. Next, adding the Kinetic Cypher mod will help with creating all the power via our main primary, and then having firepower will also help when using our grenades a lot. Afterwards, I've added the Elemental Charge mod for allowing us to get armor charges faster when collecting ion traces, and I won't be using Surge mods as honestly, they aren't needed here. For weapons, we are using the Wish Gender, which is a perfect exotic weapon to use for endgame builds. As the build does not need anything specific for weaponry, the following works out well for covering all angles I will need for tackling the toughest bosses in game. Ideally, using this to break barrier champion shields down in one shot is super helpful with me getting rid of them before they become a major problem down the line. Also, using this against bosses is also viable in a wide number of cases. So if you're facing a ranged endgame boss and you can't peek out too much facing them, then the following suits the build pretty well with taking them out very slowly. It's just an all rounder great bow to have if you haven't gotten it just of yet. For weapons, we are running the Swarm of Death with dynamic sway reduction and Vorpool. Suitable for majors, ultras, mini bosses and bosses overall. The weapon can be easily used to cover multiple angles and situations where you can't use your other weapons as of yet. Having a arc rock launcher is also viable here, but the overall damage and love reserves for machine gun allows for more tactical use. Like mentioned before, 
If you can't get the Adept, then Standard One is also fine to get and also easily farmable. Although the Exotic has been severely nerfed to the point of not many players want to use it, it's not as bad as many people think it is, and here's why. The amount of ability energy you're getting back is around 400% once active, which comes to about a quarter of energy being given back to you. If you trigger its times 2 effect, then that'll be around 800%, which is almost half energy returned. The amount returned allows players to be more flexible when picking and choosing mods, as using Arc subclasses with its Iron Traces effect is also going to be granting you quite a lot of feedback. Having a max out resilience and discipline does go a long way, but having a spark of recharge, spark of ion, grenade kickstart, charged up, and elemental charge is where the build will go from A tier to S tier. As the exotic is such an easy to understand item, all players need to do is just build into one key stat you use a lot, and then let the rest fill in from there. That's it. You don't need another exotic weapon to synergize the effect, nor do you need weapon perks to help improve ability regen. Just good stat armor and fragments plus mods shown, and you're good from there. Quite honestly, the build still feels in the role of being the king of endgame content because of how powerful you become while offering little in return. It's amazing against mini bosses to bosses when you're solo or in teams. It can hold its weight against mobs in enclosed areas. It can survive pretty lethal hits that usually end runs. And most of all, it's easy to use even when you're being on a seasonal break. It has everything an endgame player like me would want as I'm the type of player who enjoys messing around with different builds as much as possible. But if I need a go-to build for carrying or helping others, this is my main one that covers all angles that I need. Although the mini does pose a risk to the user, and using a class ability can be tricky for most newer players, these are the best when it comes down to being more mobile and aggressive in game. This season is soon to end, so if you need to complete those GM Nightfalls fast, or need to carry a friend or two for the Conquer title, then this one and only build will help you achieve that. So there we have it, I hope you all enjoyed the build breakdown. If you have any thoughts on content shared then please leave a comment below, while at the same time if you enjoy the content or want more of these videos in the future then leave a like and sub here. I'll leave a dim link for the build below, and if you want more stuff like this then I have a playlist available covering all types of builds you desire. It was great sharing today's video with you all, and I hope to see you again soon.